Theme 54, Humorism, Mark Twain, Henry James and Cosmopolitanism, Index, 1. Introduction, 2. Relation with other themes, 3. Current legislation, 4. Brief historical background, 5. Mark Twain, Life, 6. Travel narratives and novels, 7. Twain's humor and satire. 8. Henry James, Life. 9. Novels and High Society. 10. Contrast between Twain and James. 11. Conclusion applicable to language teaching. 12. Relevant bibliography. The theme I have chosen to write about is number 54, which deals with the life and works of American writers Mark Twain and Henry James. I will talk about the life and main works of both authors, such as their style and way of writing, concentrating first of all on Twain's humorism and then on the cosmopolitanism of James. I will finish with a conclusion related to some thoughts on how best to deal with these literary aspects in our secondary school classes. This theme is directly related to numbers 46 and 52, which deal with the historical evolution of the United States in this important period. The new improved organic law of education, the LOMLOE, came into force in 2021 and has now been introduced in secondary education. The law deals comprehensively with the most suitable type of methodology to be implemented in our secondary school classes. The official curriculum of the Autonomous Community of Madrid contains detailed information about the introduction of cultural points related to history and literature during the different stages of compulsory secondary education and bachillerato. All of this is established and supported by the Council of Europe in the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. I will begin my theme by talking generally about these two American writers. Although Mark Twain and Henry James were writers during the same period, the second half of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th, their points of view, techniques and interests were quite different, as we will see later in this theme. I will now go on to concentrate on the lives and main works of Twain and James, bearing in mind the two relevant features that characterized each of them, humorism and cosmopolitanism, respectively. Mark Twain, whose real name was Samuel Clemens, was born in Florida, Missouri, in 1835, but at the age of four, he moved with his family to Hannibal, Missouri, on the Mississippi River. This fact would be an important turning point for his posterior life as a writer, as the Mississippi River exercised a powerful fascination on him which he was to describe vividly in his main works. Shortly afterwards, his father died, and he began to work as an apprentice in a print shop. In 1853, he left Hannibal and in the next four years worked as a printer in St. Louis, New York, Philadelphia and Cincinnati. He eventually ended up in New Orleans, when he learned the pilot's trade and spent four years steering boats up and down the Mississippi. It was then that he adopted the pseudonym of Mark Twain. Clemens usually maintained that this name came from his years on the riverboat, where two fathoms, like 12 feet or sea water, was measured on the sounding line and marked by calling Mark Twain. The American Civil War broke out and traffic on the Mississippi became impossible, so he joined the Missouri militia and headed for Nevada. After a short period living as a pioneer looking for gold, he once more began to make his living as a writer. He quickly mastered popular forms of newspaper comedy and started to gain a reputation with Western readers. In 1864, he moved to California, where he became quite a successful writer, working for a variety of newspapers and magazines. In 1867, he was commissioned to sail on the first cruise ship for Europe and the Holy Land in order to send back entertaining travel letters. He got married and carried on a peaceful life for a while. In 1876, the first of his great books, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, was published. Around 1889, he increasingly lost direction as a writer and wasted time and money on unprofitable businesses. His pessimism and bitterness increased with the death of his wife and two daughters. In 1901, he received an honorary degree from Yale, as well as others in 1902 from the University of Missouri and in 1907 from Oxford University. He died in 1910 in Connecticut. Twain's main works are usually divided into travel narratives and novels. I will now talk about some of these in more detail. Regarding his travel narratives, The Innocent Separate and Ruffinet told of his travels east and west. 
written for the newspaper readers of his days and not particularly well revised when collected, these sketches had the freshness of a happy response to life as it happened. A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court literally transports the common Yankee of the 20th century to the mythical days of the court of King Arthur. The idea of transplanting a modern man to a past or future time or to a remote or imagined country in order to comment on the present is a common device. It was extremely popular at the time that Mark Twain was writing. As far as his novels are concerned, I must highlight The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Life on the Mississippi, and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, three books that are really parts of one masterwork. They grew out of the discovery of his own boyhood. The first one is almost wholly narrative, a story written for boys, full of the horror and joys of childhood. The second is a collection of sketches and impressions of the Great River, taken partly from fresh observation and memory. The third one knits the whole group together. It is the story of a boy, but no longer a story for boys. In the perspective of this third, all three books have an unsuspected depth and a further meaning. The difference between Tom and Huck is the difference between the early and the later Mark Twain. The creator of Tom was a lover of life and the creator of Huck was a skeptic and agnostic who had turned against mankind because of its humanity to man. The material for all of Twain's best novels was his boyhood home or the Great River Mississippi. For this reason, we had to say that it was his memory of the life he had known in childhood and youth that played an important role in his writing. It is clear that Twain found the way of life in Nevada and later in San Francisco repugnant to him and his humor was a form of coping with the hard conditions of the frontier. This contrasts with the popular idea of Twain as a young barbarian reveling in his circumstances. The truth seems to have been that he lived in a chronic state of nervous exhaustion occasioned by the almost total repression of living in a society without law or any other symbol of the civilized society he was used to. His early humor is almost wholly aggressive. Twain's ambition, however, compelled him to remain a humorist because humor was what sold. For the critics, Twain's satire creates a problem. His method tends to strike at targets unworthy of satire and it often degrades beauty or debases distinction, thus simplifying life, and this goes some way to explaining Twain's immense popular appeal. Twain's true genius also lay in his ultimate discovery of a language which was simple, flexible, and sustained, and which provided him with the hint of another sort of humor. He knew important aspects of the technique. The humorous story is told gravely, and the teller does his best to conceal the fact that there is anything funny about it. He took the humorous anecdote combined with autobiographical reminiscence and so achieved the narrative adapted to his mind. I will now move on to talk about Henry James. He was born in New York in 1843, but when he was less than a year old, his family moved to Europe. In 1845, they returned to New York, but in 1848, his father planned to take his children to Europe, where James attended schools in England, France, Switzerland, and Germany. In 1860, he was back in the States, where he went to Harvard Law School, but he soon withdrew from his law studies to try writing. In 1869, he traveled extensively in England, France, and Italy, and on his return home in 1870, had his first novel published. In 1875, he finally settled in Europe. As we can see, from the very beginning, his world was one of contrast between America and Europe, and his novels frequently presented a great confrontation between American and European cultures. His true fascination lay in the contemplation of dark forces underlying the rigidity of the social codes. He was a writer who was passionately concerned with people, not with books or ideas. On his travels, he met great Victorian figures such as Robert Browning, Tennyson, or George Eliot. In 1905, he revisited America. At the outbreak of the First World War in 1914, he became a British citizen, dying at the age of 72 in 1916. Despite the excellence of his large output of criticism and short fiction, James is important chiefly for his novels. He tried to conquer the theater, although he was forced to abandon his plan and return to the novel. Due to his background, James represented the highest circles of society in his novels. He always presented in his books the confrontation between American and European culture, showing respect for both of them even when he disagreed. He began as a writer of the international novel and even in his later works continued to employ international characters, but he concentrated more on the psychological processes and responses which man makes to situations. 
he also simplified the essential structures of his earlier fiction and intensified the realistic surface towards metaphor and symbol. In his first novel, Roderick Hudson, James developed several of his most typical preoccupations and themes. The New England Puritans, intoxicated and bewildered by their sensuous education in Europe, and the Americans who dreamt of transcending the ordinary constraints of experience. The problem of how to be an artist was complicated by that of how to be an American. James made himself over aware of what it meant to be an American by turning his back on the country of his birth and living a large part of his life in England and the capitals of the continent. The short stories and novels which he wrote from 1871 to 1881 established his point of view and method and set up the three main themes of his career. In contrast of American sincerity and crudity with European deceit and culture, the conflicting realities of life and art, and the contrast between good and evil. In the works like The American, Daisy Miller, and The Portrait of a Lady, the problem of expertise occupied his main attention. For example, in Daisy Miller, the main character, Daisy, is a combination of innocence and audacity. She defies the conventions of European society and falls a tragic victim to her innocence. In The Portrait of a Lady, James wrote about the cultural contrast between America and Europe. Before concluding, I would just like to make a contrast between the two writers. Twain's work, The Innocents Abroad, parodied the cultural pilgrimages that were solemn in the Victorian age, in which thousands of Americans paid tribute to their European art and history. Henry James spiritualized traveling abroad, giving to it an almost religious tone of high cultural level. On the contrary, Twain discredited the European masterpieces. He placed himself over Europe, not like James, who looked at the continent from below. Twain refused to be ruled despotically by culture and he fought with his humor and sarcasm against the cultural pressures that proposed the worship of European treasures. He defied the American autodenigration that was implied in the homage that writers like James tributed to Europe. To conclude, it is easy to see how the inhabitants of what was then a relatively young nation had completely different perspectives on life. While Mark Twain adopted a mainly insular viewpoint, Henry James was more interested in the remarkable cultural contrasts he found between America and Europe. We could easily make use of both the historical period and the literature of these two writers in our classes, for example through adapted versions of the works like The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Many literary productions from this period have since been made into television series or films and would also give us a great deal of suitable material to use in class. The bibliography I have used for the information on this theme has basically been the Norton Anthology of American Literature by various authors. I hope you agree with me that my theme has covered all the necessary points and that it has demonstrated the importance of dealing with this important literary period in the United States of America through the works of two such renowned figures as Mark Twain and Henry James, using up-to-date methodological principles, something which can only be of benefit to our students.